Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having an amazing Sunday. Uh, today is December 29th. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have two more trading days in the year, right? So we have the 30th, the 31st, tomorrow uh, is the 30th. Uh, so therefore, uh, we we want to do our part in making sure that we end the year strong, right? So I'm going to be erasing all the stocks that we talked about last week. And one of the things that I want to remind you is that you know, we have nothing but time, right? If we want to make sure that we uh, not only end 2019 strong, we want to make sure that we kickstart 2020 off on a positive note. Uh, so again, if you don't see an opportunity to present itself on the 30th or the 31st, uh, friendly little reminder, I know you guys always, um, you know, already know, but friendly little reminder, there's no reason to force a trade, especially if there's nothing going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is our Sunday Stock Talk. For those that are tuning in for the first time, welcome. My name is Ricky and we host these every single Sunday uh, at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So we have a couple of people stopping in right now. What's going on, team? What's up, what's up? What's going on, Vinny? What's going on, Alan's uh, Kitchen? Ron, Josh, Josh Johnson, what's up, what's up? What's going on, David? Uh, all I ask you is uh, this is the time that I dedicate to break down stocks for each and every single one of you. I'm gonna break down about 10 to 15 stocks Again, it's just for fun. It's enjoyable. It's, you know, I want to hear and see the way that you break things down. The only thing that I ask you within this Sunday stock talk is first rule is you should never trade based off of anyone else's opinion. That should be kind of just, you know, common knowledge. Uh, the second thing is I just want to make sure that you post it in the ticker call out format. So we have people that are going to be posting it. As you guys can see, Adrian is sharing the ticker uh, call out format. He wants me to break down drip. This is where he sees a support, resistance, entry point, exit point, and stop loss. Why do I ask that? Is it because I'm mean, because I'm grumpy? No, uh, I just really want to make sure that you do your own due diligence before I give my two cents, right? Especially when you're just getting started, you can get easily influenced, and that's the last thing that we want here. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we wanna have fun with this, right? So I really hope that I earn your thumbs up. Uh, friendly little reminder, uh, you guys should be able to see the first link down below if you tuned on in. Uh, you might have to refresh the screen just so it pops up. Uh, we do this once a month. We actually didn't do it last month, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but I host a free live trading session. Normally, I only trade live with the Learn Plan Profit Group, uh, but tomorrow, 30th of December, I'm gonna be trading live for free. If you want to tune on in, yes, you do have, have to, uh, yes, you do have to have a Facebook account to save your spot. It's the first link down below. We don't ask you for any information. We save your spot and then we send out the link. We're gonna send out the link in about two hours. So once you get that message from our messenger bot, uh, pretty much it's just gonna let you know that we're gonna send it out to you. It is gonna already have a link for you once you confirm your spot, but friendly little reminder, the real link, that link will actually work two hours after this Sunday stock talk. So. If you want to tune on in to our free live trading session tomorrow, all you have to do is click that first link down below and save your spot. And then again, we go live at Market Open. So I really hope that you guys can join us. So let's go ahead and get started. And let's do it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all yours for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so let's go ahead and have fun and, and see what opportunities present itself. Uh, what's going on, Dr. Simple? Uh, much love from Uganda. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, here it goes. So we're, we're going to start off with TSX. Uh, I'm going to go on the 180 day chart. So nothing popped up for TSX or either. Oh, there it goes. Uh, give it one second. I'm not too sure if it's going to take a while or not actually pop up, but um, I don't know if it's my internet. Let's see. MDF. Let's try that one. Is my thing not working? I mean it forward slash mg. Nope, my thing is working, so it might just be those ticker symbols. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. So we're gonna start off with the drip. What's going on, Adrian? What's up, what's up? I appreciate you tuning on in. Um, <clears throat> so feel free, uh, again, we're here to empower you and to, for you to share your own opinion, uh, just like I'm gonna be doing myself, right? Uh, I can definitely see, I think a lot of you guys can agree why someone uh, would begin to pay attention or be a little cautious about drip. Uh, and what I mean by this is that, you know, based off of previous patterns, again, I'm a tactical trader and I like to trade off of patterns. Uh, so we can identify a resistance right around $100 and a previous support 
Um, it, it's had one before at $50. So again, patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't have to, right? So it's just something that has happened before. So we're approaching this general area where it tends to find a support based off of how it's traded before. So I can see why you know people can then look how oversold drip is and it does offer a lot of upside potential. But one of the friendly little reminders that I have is that you know patterns tend to repeat themselves, they don't have to. If you're so certain that this thing is gonna begin to recover, then why not just keep it simple and wait for confirmation? Right now, we've been selling off for quite some time, so all it really takes is discipline. And as long as you set your alerts, and once that direction is in your favor, I think that we can both agree that once that direction is in your favor, it's just much easier to feel comfortable with your trade. So th that's my two cents. I'm gonna set my alert here. I'm gonna set a second alert once it begins to make higher highs and we could follow up with it. I do agree that it does have a lot of reversal potential, but that doesn't justify entering right now. Just because it's oversold and it's a good deal does not mean it's a good buy, right? It still continues to sell off as we've seen with recent market conditions. The market can be all over the place. So uh, no reason to rush the process, right? <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and break down the next one. I S E E. <coughs> um, here we go. Uh, okay, so it looks. Um, I'm not a big fan of these. These look like straight pump and dumps. This is a uh, biotech. I can almost biotech or bioscience, whatever it is. It looks like it had no volume. It looks like all of a sudden it began to experience a lot of volume. Earnings, nothing is really in its favor. Yes, it is uptrending. I'm not a big believer in pump and dumps. Usually, what I've heard happens with these companies is that they get paid or, or they pay for marketing which leads to exposure a lot of people might you know have these things pop up in their scanners and you know stock twits or something like that the infamous platform for people to always encourage you to trade whatever it is that they're trading uh, at the end of the day if it doesn't make sense to you then I would simply stay away this is just I to keep it in very simple terms this is not my style I don't like pump and dumps I don't like you know this like misleading type of like volume and yeah it is increasing in price and if you're okay with that then all power to you but at the end of the day it's overbought it's overextended uh, i can almost guarantee you it has very low volume right uh, so let's go on the one day one minute chart it has low enough volume that i wouldn't want to partake in it so because of that i would stay away um, i see a lot of downside potential and one of the biggest things that you might want to ask yourself is you know especially as you're just getting started do you understand where you're putting your money uh, or what you're putting your money into? And does it make sense that it could continue to increase in price? Yeah, it is showing signs of an uptrend, but let's be honest, it's so overbought that it wouldn't be much of a surprise if it begins to pull back. So um, th that's my two cents. Again, obviously that's just my opinion. Um, you let me know what you think about this one. So let's go ahead and move on uh, to the next one. What's going on, Brendan? What's up, what's up? So ticker symbol road. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, take your symbol road. Um, I think you guys have heard me uh, talk about this one before. It looks like the SMA line tends to act as a pretty common support, not always, and based off of recent patterns, it did break above the EMA line. It began to make higher highs and then began to sell off. And we see this very happen, especially when there tends to be a potential change of direction. So I would say that this is at a critical point. We don't know if this is gonna be in the very beginning stages, let's be honest, right, of this potentially selling off and breaking this overall pattern is possible, or if it's just oversold, if it's struggling to find a support, and then we can begin to make higher highs. To put it again in very simple terms, the direction is unclear. And if you're part of the Learn Plan Profit Group, you guys hear me say this all the time. If the direction is unclear and you're uncertain about which way this thing is heading, uh, then just set your alerts and give it time. Pretty simple, right? Uh, once the direction becomes a little bit more clear, you can feel more comfortable and confident behind your trade if you decide or not decide to take that position. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. <clears throat> Here we go. So we got MDF. Let's go ahead and try that one again. So I don't know if it'll pop up. Nope, nothing pops up for MDF. So I do apologize, but we got nothing that's popping up for that. So uh, we got Roku. So let's go ahead and do this one. Um, okay, so Roku is very popular for a lot of people. Um, so for all those that are asking me what platform I'm using, uh, it's probably your first time tuning on in. This is the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform. It's the platform that I use within the United States. You don't have to use it. There's so many amazing platforms out there. This is just what I use. It's irrelevant to you or if you choose to use it or not. Um, 
a lot of people like trading Roku. Uh, it has very high volatility, um, and I see a lot of people that trade options uh, trade Roku. I'm not. I don't like how inconsistent it is. Um, and this is just my style, and I'm just sharing again my opinion. I want you guys to understand that. So feel free to share your own. I don't see there to be a consistent pattern anymore. I see this to be all over the place and with inconsistency, in my opinion, brings uncertainty. And because of that, I just would simply not feel comfortable, especially if you're a complete beginner. Uh, when you struggle to identify direction, it makes it a little bit more difficult to understand what's going up and what's going down and what to pay attention to. So with that being said, yeah, I mean, you can use a series of indicators to have a better edge on, you know, if it's more overbought or more oversold. But at the end of the day, um, this just isn't my style based off of what I'm seeing going on right now. It looks like it just recently pulled back after it, after it touched the SMA line and it looks like it does have some downside potential. Uh, but it also has been uptrending enough that again, uh, it wouldn't be such a surprise if it just begins to shoot up as Roku is infamous for uh, its crazy volatility, right? Uh, but looking at how things have been trading when it does become overbought, it does pull back quite a bit and then it begins to push up again. So if you like that momentum and you like those plays, then hey, this might be something that you might, might wanna look into. If you're more selective, if you're more of a beginner and you wanna move at a much slower pace and maybe kinda just get the ball rolling, I'm not too sure if I would pay attention to Roku too much just due to that volatility. So just understand, understand that um, with great volatility, great comes great responsibility. Ooh, I like that, that's gonna be my new phrase. Uh, here we go, so shorting APA, what's going on Jess? So um, let's go ahead and break it down, let's see what, okay, so I can definitely see the overall direction obviously is descending, right, so it's selling off overbought, overextended, and there's no question that because of its recent push that it is potentially due for a pullback. Of course, just like an overall reversal, I would still wait for confirmation of lower lows, especially if you plan on taking the edge of shorting um, as we could potentially bounce um, right at the EMA line because it doesn't have to sell off just because it has been. So again, patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't have to. I would say that the direction, although it is overbought, is still unclear. We're kind of in the consolidation phase. So because of that, I would wait for confirmation. And if you get those lower lows and the direction becomes a little bit more clear, then I can definitely see why people would be looking into potentially shorting it. So uh, best of luck with that one. So not too sure why your thing doesn't pop up, uh, but here we go, I got you. So ONTX, I appreciate you tuning on in. Here we go, ONTX, and for posting it in the ticker call out format. So this is a therapeutics company. Um, again, 100% my opinion, I'm not a big, believer in therapeutics. I say this every single time, therapeutics, marijuana, bioscience, nothing like that. Overall direction is not in your favor. Yes, based off of recent patterns, and I'm guessing this thing popped up in your scanner, it pushed up 32% on Friday. You guys could see with previous volume and recent volume with, you know, it just looks like a pump and dump. It looks like people are pouring money into marketing and it looks like it's being manipulated to, beat it, to put it in very simple terms. Um, I don't like that, so I wouldn't trade it. I also don't trade penny stocks anymore, right? So um, I can see why, right? Uh, especially as something becomes a little bit more aggressive. Um, if that's your style, then all power to you. I would have a big focus on direction, a consistent pattern. And it looks like the SMA line, it worked really well with that on the one day, one minute chart. I would never swing trade anything like this. Um, and you know, if I would approach this, then I would really watch your position size and I would really watch the way that you manage your risk. I would have some form of plan, some form of structure. And if you don't have that already, then I'm not too sure if something like this would be in your best interest, uh, just because it does take a lot of discipline. And I think anyone that has any experience uh, would agree on that. So ticker symbol L-E-N. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I think that was Austin. I appreciate you tuning on in, man. So uh, what do you guys think? I, I know I'm going kind of quick. I wanted to get through. <coughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to get your guys' input. I didn't want to go too quick. Uh, but So could you please make a video about all your indicators? Raphael, I think I have one of the top videos on YouTube. If you search up top four indicators, um, I think I have, I think that was like 150,000 views or something like that. So feel free to check that one out if you haven't already. Um, I want to get you guys' input. Uh, what do you guys think about LEN? Is it overbought, overextended? Do you like the direction? Say, I, I want to hear both attractive things and maybe not so attractive things um, about LEN. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you, man. Oh, of course. 
Uh, what's going on, Chrissy? What's up? What's up? So, all right, let's see it. Let's see it. I want to get your guys' input on this. It looks like you guys are just saying what's up. So wait for confirmation. What's going on, Kenneth? What's up? <laughs> Love the upward direction. Okay. Descending pattern. Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and share my own two cents, right? We were showing signs of previous higher highs. The overall direction, no. During this time, it was super attractive. It was making higher highs. It was pushing up. And then it hit a resistance. And then what normally happens when we hit a resistance? We consolidate. We hit a resistance and then it broke below the SMA line as we've seen very often if you've been trading for a while, right? And then we begin to get rejected. It's breaking its pattern, it's selling off. So now it brings up this question, hey, it's so oversold that based off of previous resistance levels, right? It has some margin to recover. So maybe I can buy here, right? And then potentially sell up here. I don't know why my trend line tool is not working today. Um, but yeah, it offers about 5%. One of the biggest things that I have to tell you is um, the direction is no longer in your favor. It has begun to sell off. It's now tra uh, trading below the SMA line. Uh, can it push up? Of course, uh, it has an up and coming earnings, so I'd watch out for that. It has earnings on January 8th of 2020. Um, and I would definitely focus on confirmation. So if you find the margin of profit to be attractive enough, the overall direction, first of all, is not in your favor. It is oversold enough where it can begin to push up, but I would really watch the SMA line as a potential resistance or around that general area. We could see that the SMA line has acted as a support. And like we know, when we break below support levels, old support levels can become new resistance levels. And you know, if you don't even want to take a position, but you just want to follow up with this to kind of see what I mean, uh, I think that that could be an idea as well, right? Especially if you're just getting started, you want to enjoy what you're doing every day, right? And you want to keep it exciting. And when you become so obsessive about the dollar amount, especially when you're just getting started, let's be honest, it takes time to you know, get around this learning curve. So I'm gonna set my two alerts here, one for when we begin to make higher highs, and then one for when we begin to approach the SMA line. Another one, because it can happen, right? It could begin to sell off and make lower lows. So I would say that this would be at a critical point right now. We don't know if it's gonna bounce, we don't know if it's gonna continue to sell off. So I would wait and see what happens when the direction becomes a little bit more clear of what side it picks, then maybe you can have a better edge on what to do or maybe what not to do. So let me know what you guys think about that. So we got Rocket Star CP, ticker symbol YUM. <clears throat> Sweet, ticker symbol YUM, here we go. Uh, overall, was showing signs of an uptrend, it began to consolidate, it began to sell off, and now it's trying to find a support. Uh, so now we're working to try to see if we can make some higher highs. I'm gonna set my alert here. Um, it looks like it built a support right around this general area just because it's bounced there before doesn't mean that it has to continue to bounce there. So let's just make sure that we understand that. Uh, so I'm gonna set my alert here. I'm gonna set another one for higher highs. And the SMA line, just like we've seen before, can act as a very strong resistance level just based off of recent patterns and then it can continue to get rejected. So think about this. Don't always just think that as soon as you enter something <clears throat> that it has to continue to go up in price. Something that can very easily happen is it could begin to pull back. So with that being said, you know, it wouldn't be such a surprise that if it does get rejected. So because it's so overbought, I would really, really, really watch, you know, where we're at right now because it could 100% possibly go up or it could actually begin to pull back. So don't be so sold on the idea that it's gonna confirm itself. Uh, I would st still stay a little patient and really watch your position size. Uh, let's go ahead and I wanna do three more. I wanna do three solid ones. What's going on, Alex? So we got SBUX, so that's Starbucks, if I'm not mistaken, right? SBUX, so what's showing sign of an uptrend? Began to sell off, consolidated. Right now, keep it super short and sweet. It's consolidating once again. The direction is not clear, it's not going up, it's not going down, it's consolidating. The direction is unclear and because of that, if the direction is unclear, again, I know I'm super annoying when it comes down to this, but I say this every single time. And I want I want to ask you guys, does it make sense? Like, if the direction is unclear, would you feel comfortable taking your position? So when the direction is not clear, right? Would you feel comfortable taking your position? I think that this is something that we can all answer if you've traded in the market before. Uh, have you not experienced a position where the direction is in your favor, you enter the position, and you know it just so it, it's just such a, a a simple way of trading. 
Obviously, it's not always like that, right? But it's something that we can work towards, especially as you're just getting started. You know, we can set our alerts, we can wait for confirmation. And then once we have that, we're actually going down, you know, the, the, the process and the steps of what would make more sense and, and feeling comfortable with the positions that we're taking. So um, again, just I just want to make sure that you guys understand that that is the way that I like to trade. It doesn't mean that you guys have to. Uh, but I wanted to at least share that with you guys. So let's go ahead and Trey is sharing FDX and then I'll break down another one. So we got FDX, this is FedEx, uh, a lot of consolidation here. So again, if you're someone that's just getting started, if you're someone that likes consistency, uh, well, this one's consistent, uh, consistently uh, going up and down, right? So this is a little bit more of a horizontal pattern. Some people work really well with that, others don't. I would set my alert here and the reason why is that you know, there's no question based off of previous highs. I think that we all see it, right? Uh, based off of previous highs, we it wouldn't be much of a surprise if it does begin to push up. But one of the things that I want to bring up is that it was previously trading above the SMA line. What are we doing now? Trading below it. And look at the MACD and look at the RSI. It wouldn't be such a surprise either if this thing begins to sell off. Patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't have to. It looks like it did already recover, but now it looks overbought, so now we might actually begin to pull back before we continue to uptrend. So I would say that right now, again, you don't want to buy. I, I wouldn't want to buy at the very top of something thinking that it's going to continue to go up, but it actually sells off, and therefore I ended up buying at the very top. So I'm going to set my alert here, but I'm also going to set my alert uh, at 155. So if it does begin to make new highs and it does begin to try to, uh, you know, uh, gap up and cover this gap, uh, then we can follow up with it. And you can ask yourself the question, is the pattern consistent enough? Is the direction cl uh, clear enough? And is the margin of profit worth it? So let me go ahead and break down. I'm going to do two more. I know I've been going through these pretty quick. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. I know you guys have probably a busy, busy Sunday. Uh, so here we go. C E L H. C E L H. Here we go. All righty. <clears throat> here it goes. So, um, yeah. Uh, just based off of recent patterns, this overall is a little bit more on the overbought side than it is oversold. So, because of that, it hasn't been making higher highs. And it looks, based off of the MACD, the RSI, and recent patterns, that this thing is in the very beginning stages. Of selling off so I would be very careful with that I'm gonna set my alert here and it wouldn't just you know you guys can do your own due diligence but yeah I don't like that it's trading below five dollars uh, I could already tell that it has very low volume uh, so I wouldn't trade it because of the volume I wouldn't trade it because of the direction and I wouldn't trade it because of how overbought it is so because of that I would simply stay away again that is 100% just my opinion uh, but I at least wanted to share that with you so short APA oh Jesse I already broke it down for you so here we go, ticker symbol cold. Luke, appreciate you tuning in. Here it goes, ticker symbol cold. Uh, we were showing signs of an uptrend. We began to consolidate, broke below the SMA line. Again, we're seeing this very often. Now runs the question of, are we gonna gap up or is it so overbought because of where it sold off and how it's already tried to recover? Looking at the MACD, looking at the RSI, that are we so ex overextended that it's gonna begin to make lower, that it's making lower highs. And what we mean by that is that it's now potentially can show signs of a descending pattern. So instead of this being a support, this could be a potential resistance and then we can begin to sell off once again. So again, don't be sold that it has to recover. Wait for confirmation and make sure that you feel comfortable with that trade. So I'm going to set my alert on both sides and then we can simply begin to follow up with it. So uh, happy doing it. <clears throat> No, oh, I appreciate that, Abel. Thank you. Uh, why don't you use the daily chart? I do when it comes down to day trading. Uh, I wanted to give a better breakdown based off of overall direction uh, on the 180 day chart. It's just my preference. It's it does not something that you have to do. Uh, all right, so Oracle, um, again, I'm a big believer in direction. It's not uptrending. I'm not missing out on anything, right? Like if you wanna grow your account, it would make sense to put your money in something that's showing signs of growth. Um, if it's increasing in value within the day and you're a day trader, then again, that direction is in your favor. It makes it so much easier for you not to, how many times have you taken a position where you always try to find the bottom, find the bottom, find the bottom, but it just continues to sell off, sell off, sell off, and you just feel again like the entire market is against you. The market's not against, the market doesn't even know you exist, right? It's just like, you know, you're not doing your part in keeping things simple, at least in my experience, 
when that direction is in your favor and there's a clear pattern and a clear opportunity, it's just so much more enjoyable and so much easier to either you know make a profit or if you do take a loss because it broke its pattern, then you can quickly cut losses and manage your risk. And again, at least you learned something from your mistake rather than being hopeful. And I think that's the best of both worlds. So, alrighty, I'm gonna do, uh, <laughs> what's going on, Dia, what's up, what's up? So I'm gonna do one more. Um, so Daniel, he does live stream in the morning for the Learn Plan Profit members. Oh, I appreciate that, Jesse. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. Um, so we have a lot of people sharing their ticker symbols, but um, not in the ticker callout format. So I can't break it down for you guys. You guys aren't putting it in the ticker callout format. So uh, I'm going to do a breakdown on the overall market. So I'm going to do forward slash MQ and then we could end it there. So it looks like we've been live for almost about 30 minutes. Uh, very similar breakdown to last week. So last week we had a really strong push up starting up to the market open. Uh, and it looks like we received that as well. We received a pretty solid pullback, if I'm not mistaken, on either Thursday or Friday. Uh, well, it would, it would have been Friday, right? So I uh, pulled back to the EMA line. Again, it's so overbought, so overextended that yeah, we are showing signs of an uptrend, but it wouldn't be much of a surprise that if it does begin to sell off, it does have a lot to give back. So for those that are in open positions that are going long, uh, then I would really watch forward slash NQ, which is the S&P 5, uh, this is the NASDAQ future, and then forward slash ES uh, follows the S&P 500 future. So just so you guys can see also, I have no open positions, no working orders, no filled orders, uh, just like we do every single week. Um, I'm a day trader and that's what I focus on. That doesn't mean that that's the best option. It's just where my attention is at. So I like the challenge of opening and closing a position all within the same day. Um, I find it to be challenging. I challenge myself to aim for a $500 goal daily. Uh, and on Friday, I hit a little bit over $1,100. So I've been enjoying it. I've been focusing on consistency. Uh, $500 uh, is around 1.25%. So being able to hit a $1,000 goal um, is in a sense then 2.5%. But again, it's all about getting the bar rolling. It's all about building your eye for value and having a set list of criteria that every stock has to meet. So again, I hope that some of the stocks that we broke down today uh, either can guide you in the right direction um, or the way that I broke things down today can give you a better understanding of how to take on your next trade. So um, again, I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. I know you guys are probably busy. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up. Friendly little reminder, it's the free live trading session tomorrow at Market Open. So wherever it is that you are, at market open, I go live, not only with the Learn Plan Profit Group tomorrow, but I'm gonna go live for everyone. So if you want to tune on in and save your free spot, it's gonna be the first link down below. I do these about once a month. I didn't do one last month. So I would love for you to tune on in and to get a taste of what the Learn Plan Profit Group gets to experience. Yes, you do have to have a Facebook account. If you don't have one, then again, take five minutes to make one if you want to tune on in. Again, we have to send you the, the private link somehow. So once you save your spot, uh, give me about two hours after this live stream and the, uh, the live trading link will be active. So it won't be active right now, not until about two hours after we close out this Sunday Stock Talk live stream. So I really hope that I earn your thumbs up. Again, we have two more days in 2019. It's not a make it or break it. It's not you trying to impress other people. It's have fun with what it is that you're doing. You know, it's we are, I think the beautiful part about what it is that we do as day traders, and let me know if you guys agree, is you know, we are we challenge ourselves every single day to seek opportunity. And let's be honest, opportunity does not necessarily have to present itself every single day. Therefore, if these last two days, if there's not a clear direction, if there's not a clear opportunity, if you don't see anything present itself, I just want to be that friendly and annoying reminder that you don't have to take a trade. You're not here to impress anyone. If we want to start 2020 strong, we need to make sure that our actions ending in 2019 are something that work 
and align with that. So I really do appreciate you guys' time. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, if you're part of our you know, free Facebook group, the link is down below. It's the second link, I believe. So you guys can join with that. Um, or if you're part of Learn, Plan, Profit, send me a direct message on Discord. Don't message me on Instagram. Don't message me on Facebook, on Discord only. Send me a direct message. I have a different, you know, you guys can always like, uh, at Ricky Gutierrez and my little username is going to be a little bit of a different color. Please do not email me. Just message me on Discord. I really do appreciate you guys' time. Like always, guys, continue working hard. Continue following your dreams. Let your passion be a job and your success. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. We have two more days. Let's make it happen, team. So you guys, why was there a reverse stock split? Uh, we explained it about three weeks ago. So you might want to uh, YouTube search it. Take it easy.